Princess Kainiska. A long time ago in Greece, lived an extraordinary and audacious young woman named Kainiska. She was born in a family of great wealth and prestige in the city of Sparta, which was renowned for its fierce warriors and equestrian traditions. From a very young age, Kainiska showed a natural affinity for horses, and her love for these majestic creatures grew stronger with each passing day. Ever since she watched the Olympic Games with her brother and her father, King Archidamus, she daydreamed of winning the chariot race at the gala sporting event. At a time when young girls of her age would play with dolls and toys in the playground, Kainiska spent hours sneaking into the stables. She made friends with steeds of all kinds of breeds and tended to their needs. She pushed herself and her equine companions to their limits. Despite being born into a society that considered horse racing a sport, it was reserved for men only. But Kainiska was a non-performing young woman. One time, her father, King Archidamus, saw her sneaking out of the palace early in the morning. He stealthily followed her to see what she was up to. Princess, what are you doing? You can't be here. The king will have me flogged. If you follow all the rules, you miss all the fun. Don't be a killjoy. Now scram. Out of my way. Young lady. <gasps> what are you doing here in the stables? These are no places for women. Father, I know, but... I want to learn how to train horses like a pro. I want to erase them in the Olympics. You what? Kaniska, don't you know well that women are not allowed to compete in the Olympics? This is absurd. You are a princess. You better behave like one. But father, why should I not be able to compete? I have the best horses in Sparta. I have been training them myself. Why should my gender limit my abilities? It's not about your abilities or skill, Kaniska. It's about tradition. Women are not meant to participate in athletic events. It's... it's ungraceful. You talk about grace after you snuck up on me? I can do it. I believe I can win. Please, Father, just let me enter my horses in the Olympics. I will make you proud. Listen, Kaniska. I admire your enthusiasm. But you must be realistic. Even if I were to allow you to enter your horses, the society would sneer at you and say mean things to you. You have to trust me, Father. I know what I am getting myself into. Gosh, you are stubborn. If this is what you want, then go all out, sweetie. Also, <clears throat> ahem, there is a suitor coming to see you. A wealthy merchant from the East. Please be at your best behavior, darling. You scared the last one you met. Oh, gosh. Not another suitor. Whew. They're all so lame. All they want is to turn me into a trophy wife. Well, I want to win an actual gold medal. Kainiska was known to be one of the most eligible bachelorettes in all of Greece. Her father had many suitors lined up for her, but none of them seemed to capture her heart. Ahem, my dear. Um, I have brought you the finest silks and jewels from the East. I hope they meet with your approval. They are indeed glistening, but I'm afraid they are not what I'm looking for in a husband. But, Kaniska, I can give you anything your heart desires. Wealth, power, and status. Um, how about a ticket to participate in the upcoming Grand Olympics. Excuse me? That is a rather specific request, and it's nearly impossible. I appreciate your opinion, but I have other aspirations in life. I wish to race in the Olympics and become the first woman to win. <laughs> oh, Kaniska, that is not a princess's place. You should be married, ruling my heart, and taking care of children.
You cannot tell me what I can and cannot do. My place is whatever I choose to be. And right now, that is on the racetrack. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to my horses. Kyniska sighed and leaned back in her chair, wondering if she would ever find a man who understood her dreams. Just then, one of her attendants entered the room with news. Lady Kaniska, a young man has arrived outside. He said he wishes to speak with you about becoming your jockey. Kaniska sprang up in her chair with a glint of hope in her eyes. Bring him in. Lady Kaniska, my name is Leonidas. The king told me about your desire to race in the Olympics. I am a skilled jockey myself, and I would be honored to ride for you. And why would you do that, Leonidas? What's in it for you? I have always loved horses and the thrill of racing, but I have never had the means to compete at such a high level. If I ride for you, I know we can win. Kaniska smiled. She is mightily impressed by the young man's zeal and passion. Very well, Leonidas. You may ride for me, but you know this will be a challenging path. Are you ready for that? Yes, princess. I will do whatever it takes to help you achieve your dreams. Meet me at the stables at sunset. I'll introduce you to your co-workers. I wonder who they are, princess. Your teammates, Leonidas. My horses. Our horses now. We are a team. Hurry up. We need to start training. See you at four. Leonidas diligently waited at the stables. Kyniska excitedly introduced the newest member of the team to her beloved horses. Leonidas, meet the big four, Zeus, Poseidon, Apollo, and the leader of the herd, Hera. Say hello. Ah, hi, hello. So my friends, how are we feeling today? Oh, you know, just horsing around. <laughs> you always crack me up, but seriously, Absolutely set. We have been practicing our knees and gallops for weeks. Well, that's good to hear. Remember, we have to be fast and focused if we want to win. No problem, boss. Fast as a lightning and as focused as a hawk, just like you taught us. Now let's go out there and show those other horses what we're made of. Indeed. Onward, my noble steed. Hop on, Leonidas. Each day, Kyniska and her team woke up before sunrise and began their training regimen. They would start up with a warm-up routine. Next, they would move on to endurance training. Kyniska would closely monitor the horse's stamina and speed, making sure they were in top physical condition. She'd push Leonidas to do better, too. And then Kyniska would focus on improving their agility and speed. She took them through a series of drills that included obstacles, jumps, and sharp turns. She would often change the obstacle course of the drills, keeping the horses guessing and improving their reaction time. Meanwhile, Leonidas underwent rigorous training. Kyniska would make him practice riding at high speeds and maneuvering the horses through tight spaces. They would also practice controlling the horses with subtle cues. After relentless hard work for a few months, Kyniska felt confident in her team's ability to compete at the highest level. Just then, a group of men rode horses down the road on chariots as they heckled and ridiculed Kyniska. Way to go, princess! Ah, uh, look at those novices there. So cute! Hey, are you trash-talking us? I can't tell. I hope you race better than that. I bet my horses run faster than you run your mouth. Keep it moving, fellas. <laughs> Don't listen to them, boys. We are ready. That was awesome, my lady. The way you stood up for all of us. Thank you. Oh, 
Thank you so much for agreeing to ride with me in the Olympics. Your skills are invaluable. It's an honor, Princess Kaniska. I've been a fan of yours for a long time, and I've always admired your courage. Oh, really? That's very kind of you to say. It's true. In fact, I have to confess, I have a bit of a crush on you. Oh, I see. Well, I'm flattered, but I don't think now is the time or place to discuss that. Oh, of course, I understand. I just wanted you to know how I feel. And I promise, I won't let my feelings for you interfere with our performance in the race tomorrow. I appreciate that. We have to focus on winning, and nothing else matters. Ahem. The day of the reckoning had arrived. The crowd came in numbers. They cheered and roared at every participant when they made their way to the starting point. But when Kainiska's chariot showed up, there was pin drop silence. People murmured awkwardly. But Kainiska had her chin up. Leondinus was set. Hera and her herd had an intense look on their faces. Moments before the race, Kainiska turned to her team and said, Remember your training, boys. What we have been chasing is on the other side of that finish line. Ready, steady, go! The race began. Kainiska and her horses surged forward with incredible speed and agility. The spectators watched with bated breath as she navigated Leonidas and her horses, she twisted and turned at the course, narrowly avoiding collisions with other chariots. Everybody was left behind. The crowd went berserk. Finally, they crossed the finish line in first place. Kainiska cheered and hooted like when she was a little girl. She was overwhelmed. She made history. She became the first woman to ever win an Olympic event. Tears of happiness trickled down her cheeks. Leonidas was shook. You did it! Princess, you did it! No, we did it! Kainiska's victory at the Olympics sent shockwaves throughout Greece. It challenged traditional norms and inspired women everywhere to pursue their dreams. She was celebrated as a hero and an icon of courage and determination. Kainiska walked so that women could run, and that was how it all began. One Spartan woman's indomitable spirit was the torchbearer for women at the Olympic Games. As they say, well-behaved women rarely make history.